the first thing we want to do is be able to write a blog. Let's go ahead, we'll create an item over here. So create another one here. This one will be blog and create. Come over here. want the same layout so I'm just gonna copy that and paste it in. Now we need to create our controller. We'll call it log controller. We'll have the index but we'll also have create. Do that. Uh, it will be um, create post. I don't know. Uh, let's see. Pen. All right, cool. So create a post, and we are brought to blog create. Perfect. Okay, so for our create view. We're going to have to create a view model. Let's go into models and I'm going to add a folder, call it blog, add a new class and call it uh, create blog view model. Inside of this view model are the things that we're going to want to put into our view, one of which will be a blog. We have not created a blog model yet, so let's go ahead and do that. We'll add a new class. We'll just call it blog. This is going to be a database item, so we want it to have an ID. We want all the fields that will be associated to a blog. For instance, we have someone who created the blog, and that person would be an application user. So we'll do public application user, and we'll call it creator. Okay, a blog should have public string title, content, we'll do public date time created on Maybe we want it to be approved first. That could be as simple as a public bool approved. Public application user. Maybe they're currently working on the blog, but they don't want to publish it yet. That would be as easy as public bool published probably want to create another object called post similar to our blog needs an ID so we know that a post should belong to a blog so public blog also probably want to know when the post was created We'll want to know who posted it. We'll want to know the content. And perhaps this post may be a child of another post. So someone posts something, someone comes along and replies to that post. So uh, maybe we want to throw in a uh, another post. We'll call it parent. Okay, so back on our blog, we did say that, um, you know, uh, posts belong to a blog. So we will want to add a list of posts that belong to this blog. However, we don't want to store that in the database. Um, we will just fetch it whenever we query for those posts um, on the blog. So 
we'll do public virtual i enumerable post posts so i realize that we're going to have some issues with this namespace um, in the blog when we create blog view model um, as we want to end up pulling in the blog that we created down here so I'm going to rename this folder to uh, we're going to rename it to blog view models okay and then up here dot blog view models okay now in this we can do public blog so in the blog controller when we come to the create um, endpoint to the create route we want to pass in a brand new um, create blog view model to do that we will just simply say new create blog view model and that's it now inside of our create we need to tell it our model is a quick blog dot models dot blog view models dot create blog view model to spare you the pain of me trying to figure out the HTML for this, I put this freeze frame in, so go ahead and copy it. Uh, we're going to have a public I action result that we add. And it's going to take in a create blog view model. Because that's what's going to be posted to it. It's also going to be post so for now let's just return view that's fine we're gonna update this in a little bit and what we need to do is handle the logic behind um, actually adding a blog we'll create a folder in here call it business managers and we'll say a new folder we'll call it interfaces and then we'll add a, a new class we'll call it blog business manager we'll add the interface for it all right and now we will Hop on over to our configuration for app services. And this is where we will go ahead and add in our custom services. Service collection dot add. And I'm going to add uh, scoped i blog business manager blog business manager let's jump to where this is and then we'll also say services add custom services so in our blog controller we can come up here and in the constructor inside of that business manager say public let's have it return a blog create blog we're going to take in that um, create blog view model
Now here, this is where we're actually going to do our logic on the blog. So as we created the blog inside the UI, we only gave it a title and content. We need to add a few things to that before we try and submit it to the database. First thing we'll do is create, um, we'll say blog, blog equals new blog. Create it on equals date time dot now. We need to call this from our controller because we want to pass in the create blog view model and the claims principle. So from our controller in here, we'll say so we will say blog business manager dot create blog and we'll pass in this and inside of our controller user will already exist. And because this method is asynchronous, we will await it. And we need to say task async task. OK, so since a blog was is already in there, what we're going to do blog blog equals we're just going to say create blog dot blog okay now here is when we'll start adding in our stuff we'll say uh, blog dot right now we're just adding the stuff and then we're returning it. But what we really want to do is add it to the database. So to do that, we'll jump over to our services project that we created before. And we will create a new class. We'll call it blog service. Uh, we'll also create a folder called interfaces. And we'll create a class for an interface for iBlog service. OK, so we'll also need to add this to our app service. We'll need to add a reference to the service project using service. Now we have that service able to be injected. Hop back over here. So in here, we are going to create our add method so that we can actually add it to the database. Say public. It's going to be async. It's going to be a task. It will return a blog. We need to add a reference from the service to data. over here and now we're just going to add it to the database we'll say dot add we'll 
say we're putting in the blog and um, now we want to save those changes this is why this is a asynchronous task we'll say dot save changes async and then we will return the same block we have to take this add it into this okay. we also need to come over to our uh, application DB context and we need to tell it hey we have this thing inside the database called a DB set so public DB set and it is a blog and we say blogs we also created a post so we're gonna create a DB set for post as well inside our blog business manager we want to send it to our blog service so that we can create it and put it in the database we'll use dependency injection here now we can call that method that we created We can get rid of this extra line and we'll do return that. Since we created this blog item and we're trying to touch the database with it, we need to run our data migration and then update the database. So to do that, we'll just go to our package manager. Remember to switch to your data project, add migration, adding blog and post to database run it let's clean that up a little bit so come back here and then we run update database let's look at our output Oh, somehow I put a pipe in there. Let's try again. In our controller, we're trying to return a view, and because we're just simply returning view, um, it's going to look for a view called add. Um, however, we don't have that and we're not going to because this is just a post endpoint. So we're just going to send the user, uh, let's say, back to the create view. And to do that, Direct to action, and uh, we just pass in create. Okay. Okay, so now we're on the create page. We can see that we have two entries for blogs with our content, our titles, the created on, it's published, approved, zero, and our creator ID, that's our ID. So yeah, success.